And with that analysis, we now follow the news. There are two tracks here. A federal court ruling last night finds that Paul Manafort intentionally lied to the Mueller investigation about contacts with an operative linked to Russian intelligence, whom Manafort had an in-person meeting with while he was still serving as Donald Trump's campaign chairman in August of 2016. District Judge Amy Berman Jackson ruled that Manafort meant to lie on at least three issues and that federal prosecutors are no longer bound by their deal to recommend a lighter sentence for the 69-year-old Manafort. The judge's written order states that Manafort made multiple false statements about his interactions and communications with Konstantin Kalimnik, who the FBI has linked to Russian intelligence. The judge also ruled that Manafort lied to the FBI, the special counsel's office, and the Mueller grand jury regarding payments made by an unidentified firm, Firm A, to a law firm that the matter was material to their investigation, along with false statements in October of last year that were material to another DOJ investigation. The judge said prosecutors failed to show that Manafort lied in two other this new ruling could affect the severity of punishment for Paul Manafort. He is scheduled to be sentenced on March 13th. I, um, the level of stupidity is unbelievable, um, but this is a big, big step in the Mueller pro, a big win for Bob Mueller. Yeah, a, a big step in the probe. Jeremy, I just have to ask you, and I, I'm, I'm not being facetious here. Uh, are, 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 are not trying to be funny the least, but how in the world can these people be so stupid? How can they be so dumb? Rick Gates proffers, uh, makes a deal, proffers, lies, gets caught. Paul Manafort, uh, Paul Manafort makes a deal, <coughs> proffers, lies. I mean, all of these people lie. Uh, they're, they, they all lie to Bob Mueller and they all get caught. I feel like, like singing, where have all the flowers gone? When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? You're not going to be able to slip anything past this guy. What? So what's it mean for the overall case? Well, when you have an enormous secret, Joe, you may engage in extreme stupidity to cover it up. And that appears to be what's going on here. Manafort had an opportunity to really reduce his sentence after he was convicted, after he pled guilty. Now, there are only real two tickets out of prison when you have pled guilty. One is to work with the prosecutors, to cooperate, to be truthful, to basically open the books on everything you know. But the other path, Joe, as you well know, is a pardon. And I think in some respects, Manafort was digging in here, hopefully telegraphing to the commander in chief, to the president, his buddy, that in fact uh, he's holding firm, kind of like Roger Stone, and that a pardon should be coming his way. But I think what the, the big question looming over all of this is why were they covering up this link between Konstantin Kilimnik, who has mm -hmm. ties to Russian intelligence, and the Trump campaign? What is it about that was such an enormous secret that all of these people Jeremy, would engage not just in you know, stupidity, you? but yeah. reckless conduct? So wh wh why did they, Jeremy? What makes the most sense to you? I think they were covering up the, uh, the, the ties between the Trump Organization and the Russian Federation. And they didn't want that known, and they haven't wanted that exposed to Bob Mueller as an, and his investigators. There's no other explanation. And those ties, uh, Caddy Kay, I, I, I just, you know, wondering why and, you know, would they, why would the collusion necessarily be a, a focus of Donald Trump? I think for Donald Trump, it always comes down to money. Um, and it could, could, could it be that this was all about money and nothing about anything else that Mueller is looking into? Well, we know that he's had business dealings and was trying to get Trump Tower off again in Moscow all through 2016, was having those ongoing conversations. So there was one specific business negotiation with the Russians that was going on. Um, investigators were also looking into reports of whether he had money that was lent him by the Russians at a time when he couldn't get money from other U.S. banks in order to fund his businesses, and that's all under investigation as well. I think the, the key is what, why in August of 2016 
did Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, number one and number two on the campaign, sit down with Konstantin Kalimnik and were they discussing some kind of peace deal for Ukraine, which was broadly seen as a prelude to America lifting sanctions against Ukraine? And that would start to fit the pieces of a quid pro quo. We don't know exactly what was discussed at that August meeting, but it's odd. You know, you've just come out of the convention, the Republican convention that softened the platform when it came to Russia over Ukraine, and then you have this meeting with a Russian operative talking potentially about Ukraine and lifting sanctions and some sort of peace deal. The, the bits of the puzzle are fitting together. We just don't have all of the pieces yet. Joe. Steve Ratner, let's talk about a USA Today headline regarding the Mueller investigation. Very interesting. And Donald Trump's Washington. Donald Trump and the Republican Party have added $2 trillion to the national debt. This news from the USA Today. With, with all the forfeitures, with all the, the guilty pleas, with all the penalties, the Mueller inquiry may actually be turning a profit. <laughs> well, we can certainly use a profit. As you know, we're heading for a deficit of a trillion dollars, so every few million dollars here or there will help in getting us back to some kind of fiscal sanity. But obviously, it's not going to be enough to, uh, to, make, uh, to make much of a difference. Look, I think what Caddy was talking about it seems to be the most logical explanation for all that's going on here and of course the inappropriateness of Manafort in the middle of the campaign in 2016 uh, off trying to do either his own business for the Ukraine with the Russians or somebody else's business with the Russians for the Ukraines who knows but it's obviously just another example of the kind of really tawdry behavior that went on in the Trump campaign even before he was elected. Right, Manafort did owe a lot of money to individuals in Ukraine and in Russia. It's possible that this was entirely just to try and get himself off the hook. Yeah, and, and jo Jonathan Lemire, uh, if, if I could just say, I mean, we, by the way, happy Valentine's Day, though. You Same know, to you, Joe. Uh, I, the I Red didn't Sox get that. probably yeah. had the Stay. worst hey. uh, opening uh, day of pitchers and catchers reporting that we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, obviously, uh, it, it's the second it's day of the title. It's the second day of the title defense. I'm already panic stricken. You, you, you have, you have to be a Red Sox yeah, fan I'm to your very, death to get a happy Valentine's yeah. Day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, ve I'm very panicked, very panicked. But, but um, Donald Trump obviously not as panicked this week because uh, not only because of his poll numbers, but also. Uh, Chairman Burr uh, came out and said he didn't see any collusion. Uh, and then, of course, so you have to weigh this with the Manafort news. What's, what is the current environment inside the White House rego regarding the investigation, Manafort, Mueller, uh, uh, collusion? I, 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 I know the president has been upset, obviously, uh, over the past several months and hard to control. Uh, what about now? Well, first of all, it, it, the special counsel is an unlikely growth industry uh, that we're seeing for the American economy. So I think that is very interesting and amusing. Uh, but the president, look, he is there. Of course, Manafort remains a concern. And, and Paul Manafort's, frankly, commitment to committing crimes and to lying to investigators is to be applauded. This is the, far from the first time that he has been reprimanded by judges for misrepresenting himself and violating his plea deal. Uh, the, the, the president obviously took Burr's statement and really ran with it. He's tweeted about it repeatedly. He's really trying to sell it as this is sort of the end of the probe. Of course, we know Bob Mueller continues, uh, and there's been no conclusion reached there. Though we all should note, there may not be a final report that we're all going to be able to pour over. That's something that we need to start recognizing, that there may not be this sort of conclusion the, the, to this investigation one way or the other that I think the public is expecting. But certainly within the White House, there is a sense that the birthing thing is good news. And it comes, as you say, as you point out at the beginning of the show, those rising poll numbers, too. I think a lot of that is he really took a beating during the shutdown. And as unhappy as he is this week with this new deal, and according to our reporting, I mean, he's told people he's been upset at Republican negotiators. He feels like he could have got in there and done better. And, and we can take that statement for what it is, considering how he's been outmaneuvered on other occasions since the Democrats took control of the House. But there is a begrudging sense that he needs to sign it. Now, he is the president, Donald Trump, who changes his mind all the time. So we certainly wouldn't bet our mortgages on that. But the sense is the White House is telegraphing that he will unhappily sign it, but he will. He'll move using executive actions to f appropriate more money to spend to, to continue to finance the wall project uh, and that he'll take that as some sort of win try to change the subject. Yeah. He, ha he has or to sign it. He has no political option not to sign it. it sign it, it, move some money toward his right. wall, say I won, and, even and though he caved several times. And and it's a rare recognition from this president telling people around him, according to people we've talked to, that he knows he, he got beat. Yeah.